my lovely, lovely imps, Donald Trump. Yeah! Yeah! Whoa! There you go. That's the segment. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's not the segment. Donald Trump uh, is probably going to run for president almost assuredly in 2024. He already announced that he would be running for president uh, under a very strange uh, new uh, slogan. Uh, Donald Trump's new slogan for Donald Trump 2024 is make America great and glorious again. And if that seems kind of off brand for Donald Trump, uh, it, first of all, it's not really off brand for Donald Trump, but it is a little bit weird. Donald Trump, uh, has always been like the business type. He's always been like, you know, America business. I'm a businessman, American businesses, American, but they're stealing our, they're taking our jobs. They're shipping them to China. You know, he's been doing all that stuff. Um, yeah, you know, it's that sort of thing. Um, but he's decided now, and this has been going on for a while, he's been slowly creeping, uh, increasingly, I'm just going to be blunt, white nationalist rhetoric uh, directly into his speeches. Um, some of you will recall that earlier this year we were reacting to uh, uh, some of his earlier speeches. Um, he does a lot of speeches, and only a few of them actually get enough attention um, that they become relevant. And one of the ones that we were reacting to, which was one of his biggest crowds, was him just straight up going on about how, uh, how the left and LGBTQ people and immigrants have stolen the bright future from the children, uh, from the, the, you know, from the good proper American children, which is white nationalist rhetoric. It is fascist rhetoric. And now his official motto is make America great and glorious again. This is very minor. It's a very minor change in comparison to what we are about to talk about. But I think it's important to take note of. I think it's important to notice even small changes in the way that Donald Trump is, is pitching himself to uh, his base. And one of the things that has been most consistent in Donald Trump's uh, current campaigning and his current planning for the future is that he's leaning more and more on blood and soil. He's leaning more and more on explicit white nationalism. And he's even starting to lean into explicit fascism. Some people are going to hear me say that and they're going to roll their eyes. But I would like you to, uh, if you're one of those people who hears that and goes, ah, come on wait a second and see what I'm talking about and hear my case first, for real. Um, it is, uh, yeah. Okay, let's talk about the actual reason we're here today. We're not here to talk about MAGA, -ga, I guess, make America glorious and great again or whatever, um, though that's an important thing to notice. We're not here to talk about the yay stuff, although that's certainly a part of it. What we're here to talk about is something that just happened earlier today. If you are watching this live, um, this happened uh, approximately, let me just see here, let me get the exact time, four hours ago. Four hours ago was when this stuff started uh, with, let's see, uh, another tweet having been made about 12 hours ago earlier this morning. And, uh, or I should say not a tweet, it's, it's on Truth Social, it's the same thing as Twitter. Let's take a look at it, shall we? This was the first one, okay? Donald Trump on Truth Social this morning uh, uh, about uh, at, at 4 a.m. Apparently he's an early riser. This is what he tweeted, okay? So, with the revelation of massive and widespread fraud and deception in working closely with big tech companies and the DNC, the Democratic Party, do you, do you throw the presidential election results of 2020 out and declare the rightful winner or do you have a new election a massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules regulations and articles even those found in the constitution our great founders did not want and would not condone a false and fraudulent election or sorry false and fraudulent elections And then he followed it up with this. He tweeted, retweeted a couple of things. The world is laughing at the United States of America and its corrupt and rigged presidential election of 2020. 
unprecedented fraud requires an unprecedented cure. Now, all of us know that Donald Trump has been uh, whining and complaining about uh, the fact that he lost the election in 2020. And when I say that he lost the election in 2020, uh, I say this from the position of a leftist, okay? I am not a big fan of American electoral democracy, quote unquote. I think that American electoral democracy in its current form can only serve the interests of the most rich. Citizens United is a perfect example of this. So keep in mind, I am not some kind of liberal, soy-facing, you know, oh my God, elections are so poggers. I know there's problems with the American elect electoral system, okay? But none of the things that Donald Trump is claiming is wrong with the electoral system are things that are actually wrong with the electoral system. You see, Donald Trump just lost. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. He got creamed. And not only did he just get creamed, but he took it to court. He took it to court literally dozens of times, and he got creamed there too, because it turns out that all of the things that he's been claiming about the election fraud are just made up. There is no evidence of any of the things that he was talking about. And this is an important distinction to be made because there is tons and tons and tons of room to be criticizing the democratic process in the United States. It's very, very messed up. And I would agree that there is a, a decent amount of corruption involved in the democratic process in the United States. However, what Donald Trump is claiming is that there was a secret conspiracy by unknown deep state agents to fake the election so that Donald Trump, the true president, would lose. It is an insane conspiracy theory, and it does only one thing, which is undermine any sort of legitimacy of the currently existing apparatus in Donald Trump's favor. It's not an actual critique. It's not for the people. It is simply a, uh, a, a, a mind-bogglingly large lie that is being pushed forward so that Donald Trump can create a reality in which he is the God Emperor. And he's going even harder. Donald Trump has been whining about this fraud for a long time. He's gotten clapped on it, like I just said. But now he's actively advocating for unprecedented cures. I want us to read this one last time just so that we can take in everything that he's saying here. One more time. So with the revelation of massive and widespread fraud and deception in working closely with big tech companies, the DNC and the Democratic Party, do you throw the presidential election results of 2020 out and declare the rightful winner? Or do you have a new election? A massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Our great founders did not want and would not condone false and fraudulent elections. Donald Trump is signaling directly into the ears of his supporters that none of it matters. None of the rules, none of the regulations, none of the constitution matters. You got cheated. It's just about power now. That's why I said that he's been leaning into explicitly fascist rhetoric. Fascists are strong believers in the idea that might makes right. Fascism is about the power of those who have strength and the weakness of those who do not have strength. Ew, ew, yucky. That's what fascism is all about. Donald Trump is giving a blanket, no mask on, no couched, dissolve the constitution if necessary. I must be your leader. The, the, the founders desire, would, the founders would be on my side. You should terminate and ignore all laws, all articles, and even the constitution because you've been stolen from. And this is an unbelievable acceleration in rhetoric. Laughing, I'm laughing at all the constitutionalists that support Trump right now. They were never constitutionalists. They only use the Constitution insofar as it helps them jockey for power. This is something that is um, 
that is sort of part and parcel of conservatism. Because conservatives have such a deep-seated belief that might makes right, um, they don't respect uh, they don't respect agreements. They don't respect uh, rule of law. Not that I particularly think there's incredible value in rule of law, but they might claim to. They do all the time. Republicans claim to be all about law and order. They claim to be, oh, my second amendment, the constitution, I got my pocket constitution. They will throw it away the literal moment that it becomes convenient because what they really believe in, deep down, what they really believe in is that God wants them to be in power. And yes, this is true even for secular right-wingers. Secular right-wingers, you'll notice that they always hang out with a bunch of Christian fundamentalists. We saw that ourselves watching Ye, Pray, and all of that stuff in the presence of a bunch of, on, of a completely mixed bag of people on uh, Alex Jones who have varying degrees of devotion to Christianity. Um, even secular right-wingers ultimately do believe that there is some sort of, uh, whether it's a cultural or a legal or a, uh, or a, um, a philosophical call to power, that their way of being is the way that should rule the whole world, that they are the rightful hierarchs. They should be on the top. And it, again, it's especially strong in Christianity. I've talked on this channel recently a lot about the rise of Christian nationalism and how uh, uh, these these fundamentalist Christian beliefs um, uh, are, 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 are sort of teeing the entire Republican Party up uh, to essentially have a holy war. And that's what we're looking at today. Donald Trump going whole hog. Now, I've been talking about in the last few weeks, basically constantly... The idea that the right is accelerating its rhetoric, and I think this is the this is the the real nail in the coffin for that uh, uh, for anybody who is disagreeing with me on that. Um, some people have been saying, "Nah, right wingers are right wingers are always really loud. They're always really dramatic," and that is true. They are always very loud, and they are always very dramatic. But the types of rhetoric that they choose to employ is very telling. Conservatives uh, are. Let's talk about far, the far right, the most far right people. The most far right people use a term called mask on. They say, oh, you got to you got to go mask off sometimes. You got to put your mask on. You need to. Some people know, have heard this term hide your power level. It's incredibly common on the far right. And the reason for this is because they they correctly conclude that um, that people won't like them if they come out and say what they really believe. This is deeply, deeply entrenched in far-right rhetoric and belief. Um, however, once they become convinced that they are safe enough doing so, they will peel off the mask. They will reveal their power level. Donald Trump is doing literally exactly that. Unprecedented fraud requires unprecedented cure. What do you all think he means by unprecedented cure? Especially when he just said that his followers should be willing to terminate all laws, articles, and even portions of the Constitution so long as it puts him in power. Donald Trump is calling for a right-wing revolution right now. And I, I want you to notice that it comes after an absolutely insane acceleration of anti-LGBT rhetoric, a absurd worldwide news breaking uh, 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 acceleration of anti-Semitic rhetoric. We just watched, the video is going to be up tomorrow for uh, any of you who are subscribers on the channel. Please make sure you go check it out. It's really important that we keep our eyes on this. But uh, we're just about to publish my live reaction to the yay Alex Jones, Nick Fuentes conversation, which was viewed by millions of people, the biggest platform that most of these people have ever seen in their lives. And all across social media, we have been seeing a unbelievable uptick in anti-trans rhetoric, in anti-Semitic rhetoric, and in racist rhetoric. I am talking the acceleration is unbelievable. It's showing up in my comments. It's showing up uh, all over social media. I, I even, 
oh my God, I even saved an article that talks about exactly this, that dives in and analyzes the rise in hate speech on across all of social media right now. There is an activation happening. And this is the, the loudest ultimate uh, confirmation of exactly what I'm talking about. Donald Trump is the most important cultural uh, figure on the entirety of the right. He is their God emperor. You guys know what it was like to live through fucking 2016 to 2020 under Donald Trump. How unbelievable the personality cult is. And this guy is now saying it's time to dissolve or it's time to consider terminating the constitution. I don't know how to tell you that that's literally exactly Weimar Germany. Maybe I said that wrong. Weimar. Weimar? Weimar. It's the same shit. He had a failed coup attempt, just like Hitler had a failed uh, a coup attempt with the beer hall putsch. And now there is an explicit call to overthrow the system and reinstate Donald Trump as president. Now, a lot of conservatives are just going to sit there and stand by. And they're just going to basically be, you know, sandbags. They're basically going to be, you know, human sandbags, which is all that they need. You know, they only need they only need people to obfuscate because they have a core. The right has a core of people, whether it's the three percenters, the proud boys, whether it's these uh, the Patriot prayer, the Patriot front, uh, all of these 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 plethora of right wing far right militias, extremist militias that explicitly believe that the election was stolen on no evidence and that it rightfully belongs to the God Emperor Donald Trump in the name of God. That is their belief. And these people have been waiting for this moment. Do you remember when Donald Trump like initiated January 6th? We watched it live here on this stream. Uh, uh, we watched him go, all right, everybody. Now, uh, I'm going to need you all to go and get together your wonderful people and let's march it on down to the Capitol and show them what's what. And then it happened. That's what he's trying to do right now. Now, to be fair, this is on Truth Social. So... This is not going to be picked up by the majority of his followers, although I will say there's a lot of eyes on it. Truth Social is not a big website, and it got almost 10,000 retweets and almost 30,000 likes just on Truth Social. And Truth Social is not exactly the biggest platform. But keep in mind that this is only the first wave. This is, an, this is a, a signal of what he's going to start doing on television, on what he's going to start doing in his speeches. This is him sending out to his most loyal followers, his followers on his literally custom made uh, uh, Twitter clone. This video shows what you were saying about these people is 100% correct. Let's take a look here. A prayer declaration, Flashpoint Live, the Watchman decree. All right, yeah, you know what? I don't know what this is. Let's react to it. Let's see. This is a prayer declaration let's take a look here let's get some info about this flashpoint live in atlanta georgia the watchman okay the, i know the watchman aren't these people a uh this is like a a militia right let me double check on this okay so this is a republican this is a republican uh 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 gathering oh shit this got crazy views holy shit looking on twitter this went crazy on twitter all right let's watch this let's react to this let's see all right, go ahead. All right, Dutch, lead us. So we'll read it together, okay? As a patriot of faith, I attest my allegiance first and foremost to the kingdom of God and the Great Commission. Secondly, I agree to be a watchman over our nation concerning its people and their rights for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Whereas we, the church, are God's governing body on the earth. Remember how I said Christian nationalism is on the rise? I wasn't kidding. I've been talking about this for a really long time. It's huge. Let's continue. Whereas we have been given legal power from heaven. 
I literally just said that. Thank you for sending me this, uh, this fucking Republican event. I was just talking about how even secular Republicans buy into the idea that they have been given power from above. Whether they literally believe in God or whether God is just a useful tool for them, that's what they believe. They are telling you. And now exercise our authority, whereas we are God's ambassadors and spokespeople over the earth, whereas through the power of God, we are the world influencers, whereas because of our covenant with God, we are equipped and delegated by Him to... Because of our agreement with God, we are equipped and delegated, ordered by God, to destroy every attempted advance of the enemy. Who do you think they believe the enemy is? Huh? We know who they believe the enemy is. Destroy every attempted advance of the enemy. We make our declarations. We decree that America's executive branch of government will honor God and defend the Constitution. Notice that this part comes second to the first part. Honor God first. They believe that the government's job is to serve God. We decree that our legislative branch, Congress, will write only laws that are righteous and constitutional. Congress should only write laws that are righteous. God's laws. They want holy law. On a biblical court. Do you guys remember? Wait, do you guys remember uh, when we were watching that yay on Alex Jones thing? Remember how they were talking about uh, three of the people there agreed that blast they wanted blasphemy laws? Yay, that uh, Ali Alexander guy and that Owen Benjamin guy, all three of them were like, yeah, we want blasphemy laws. This is people need to realize this is everywhere right now this is the upheaval that's happening right now there is a great seizure in america and tons of people are rapidly becoming radicalized to the far right and donald trump just called for a dissolution of the constitution yes you can we declare that we stand against wokeness the we declare that we stand against wokeness, the occult. You can't get more, you can't get more blatant than this. For them, wokeness is any expression of LGBT rights, any expression of minority rights. That is wokeness to them. You know what they consider wokeness. Remember how I've been talking about how they have to weed out anyone who doesn't agree with the most extreme examples? This always happens in fascist movements. They have to purge the people who aren't 100% on board. We operate in unity beyond denominational lines in order to accomplish a Christian rule in America. To a 
a packed theater, to a absolutely packed theater full of Republicans. So this is with the seven. Oh, I'm, I'm familiar with the seven mountains here. Seven Mountains, the Seven Mountains mandate is a conservative Christian movement within Pentecostal and evangelical Christianity. Uh, it's a part of, this is a, it's, it's a part of dominionism. The seven areas which the movement believe control society in which they seek to control are family, religion, education, media, entertainment, business, and government. That's what they're saying. They want to take over family, religion, education, media, entertainment, business, government in the name of God. So, just so that we're clear, of course it's everything. I've been saying this forever. I've been trying so hard to get all of the atheist, all of the people who were lulled into a false sense of security by the rise of atheism in America, all of the people who went back to brunch, I've been trying to tell people that dominionism, Christian nationalism, that this fascistic surge in america is roiling this sounds deeply anti-semitic well we know who's pushing this shit they think they have the cultural upper hand with yay stuff well they will if we don't get active they and i mean when i say active i mean we need to get serious we need to get really serious everybody not just me, not just my team, not just the other streamers out there. You all have talents that can be put towards use resisting this shit. We need to push back and we need to push back hard or else they'll be right and it will be the time. Do we, can we recall what happens when these people take over? We've already seen it happen a hundred times. We've seen it in Italy. We've seen it in Germany. We've seen it in the United States. We've seen what happens when fascists take the reins by force and who they target and who they kill and who dies. And it's a lot of people who die every single time. Lives snuffed out forever. How fast they're moving is concerning normies. It did in Germany too. That's a... That was a huge part in Germany. Tons of normies in Germany laughed it off. But it doesn't matter because they don't need normies. They do not need normies. They do not need a, 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 a lot of people to, to get on board. All they need is a lot of people who won't do anything. And those, the small group of highly violent, highly dangerous people will, will act if unchallenged and they will act and have horrible horrible actions real quick right now okay just just a little thought experiment right now let's pretend that you right now in your current state were teleported into a nazi germany like situation a guy in an all black suit knocks on your door okay tomorrow you didn't just imagine nothing changes just tomorrow knock 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 greetings I'm, I can't do that. I can't do a German accent. Fuck that. Just imagine a German accent. We've come to inspect your house. What would you do? What would you do? They come in with a gun. Let us inspect your house. We want to see if you've got any, uh, if you're hiding anybody, we want to see if you've got any degenerate materials on hand. Oh, we notice you've got a, uh, we notice you've got a, ra a rainbow flag on your wall. I guess we're going to beat the shit out of you and your family. What are you going to do about it? Would you even be able to respond to that? You probably wouldn't. Most people don't live their lives ready to contend with immediate violence. Historically, fascists take advantage of this. They take advantage of the fact that most people are peaceful, that most people are kind. They take advantage of the fact that most people are, are tired and want to just dr live their lives. And a small percentage of radicals go so ham so fast. You guys think that people were expecting the night of uh, the, the night of, uh, of broken glass, the Kristallnacht? The night when Nazis ran out into the streets in mobs and trashed the businesses of Jewish people? Do you think any, any of those Jewish people were prepared for that to happen? Or do you think they were sitting there going, oh my God, this shit is concerning. It happened 
to those, to the people who lived through it, it was like it happened out of nowhere. Now, those of us out here like myself, who, who are trying to give people a, an advanced warning, and of course, my platform is fucking tiny. I'm an inter I'm a fucking entertaining st entertainment streamer. I talk about video games. I just think politics is important, and I talk about politics a whole bunch, and I really, really, really want people to get on board with this so that we don't have to deal with the horrors that happened in a place like Nazi Germany, or in a place like Nazi Italy, or in a place like Nazi, or I should say not Nazi, but fascist Spain. Artists who lived through this shit have been making art about this, and it is scary, and it is terrifying. And they made that art to warn future generations. And it's up to us to decide if we're gonna be ready to react to that. Killjoy says the night of long knives was also a surprise for people expecting violence. It's a fucking problem because normalcy bias is such a brain worm. Yes, do not be one of the people caught on the back foot when Donald Trump is literally screaming on his personal social media he's saying an unprecedented fraud requires an unprecedented cure when donald trump is saying i need my followers to be ready to violate the constitution to terminate laws to di to disobey laws to go to prison for me when he says that on a public platform into the ears of his followers take it seriously because if you don't pay the price we will. Marginalized people who are visibly marginalized will pay the price.